uh, we'll start our halaqa tonight, inshallah, our program with uh, Sheikh Yusuf Hussain. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him with the best for joining us tonight. And the subject that is going to be covered tonight, inshallah, is a very important subject for all of us. And it is about our belief and our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to make it the priority in our life. So inshallah, without further delay, I will um, hand it over to Sheikh Yusuf, inshallah ta'ala. And um, he will start to take it from there, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. And um, uh, I'm not sure, Sheikh Yusuf, um, if anyone has a question, would you prefer during the speech, the presentation, or uh, you would prefer after you finish? Um, yeah, inshallah, after we finish. They'll... After you finish, okay. So if anyone has a question, inshallah, there will be some time after, after the lecture. Inshallah, for questions and answers, inshallah ta'ala. So Sheikh Yusuf, inshallah, it's all yours now, and I'm... Um, Yani, uh, I'm, I'm here, inshallah, with you. <laughs> inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. First of all, assalamu alaikum to all uh, listeners and uh, jazakallah khair for inviting me and a special uh, thanks to uh, Sheikh Ramadan for uh, having me. Uh, alhamdulillah, we made, um, I made, I had the honor to make hajj with him, uh, the last hajj right before uh, Corona. So alhamdulillah, that was a great honor. Um, so I'll start inshallah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, amma ba'd. The topic tonight is making iman a priority in our lives. And iman, the faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, blessed us with, this is the most valuable gift that we have. We often think about the blessings of Allah, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you think about the blessings of Allah or count the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to do so. You would not be able to count them. We think about good health. We think about wealth. We think about living in a safe country, in a safe environment. We think about uh, the food that we eat. But the greatest blessing, without a doubt, is the blessing of Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us guidance. And unfortunately, there's many people who do not have this guidance. There are many people searching, looking through different religions, trying to find what's the right path. So we were born, as they say, with a, a silver spoon in our mouth. They say that about a very wealthy person, that he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth uh, because everything was handed to them. We are like that. For those of us who did not have to convert to Islam, we were just born as Muslims, we were born with a huge gift, a priceless gift, which is Iman, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. And if we look at the lives of the Prophet, the life of the Prophet sallam, and the Sahaba, and think about some of those stories. We think about Muslims who were hiding in their homes. And um, they, they used to be scared to show their Islam out of fear, not, not that they were embarrassed, but out of fear that they would be killed or tortured. Uh, you have the famous stories of Bilal radiallahu anhu and other Sahaba that they would literally, literally be tortured, almost uh, some of them tortured to death so that they would leave Islam and they would still not do so. Uh, they would pray secretly. They, they, they would make a hijrah, leaving behind. Do we understand what a hijrah is? It's not simply a, a economic migration. Like people nowadays, they move from one country to another. It's leaving everything you have behind. You don't have the chance to take your home with you. So you might have to leave everything that you have and to leave in the darkness of night. And they went to Al-Habasha, to Ethiopia. They left their homes and they went to Al-Medina. They made a huge sacrifice and a huge struggle so that they could become Muslim, so that they could remain as Muslims, so that they would not be tortured and persecuted for believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the priority that they gave to Iman. That's the, the, the realization of what Iman is worth. When they realized what it's worth, they knew that all of these things are very small in comparison to their Iman. If they leave behind their house, if they leave behind their money, their business, the city that they grew up in, that's nothing to them compared to the fact that they are preserving their faith and they are not being tested or persecuted to have to try to make them leave their religion. As for us nowadays, we oftentimes don't take that uh, blessing for granted. Just like we mentioned earlier 
good health or good uh, good health or wealth or safety or security or the food and drinks that we have we also may not take those blessings uh, or we may take them for granted because we grew up with them or we have become uh, uh, used to them so likewise when it comes to iman we don't think about it we we just grew up with it and we took it for granted but going back to this topic which is making iman a priority we want to see how we can come back to realizing the importance of this iman and it's something which deserves big change in our life even a drastic change in our life just like the sahaba the companions would have to migrate from one city to another they would have to leave everything behind make a drastic change in our life for our iman that would not be too much if we were to for example change the city that we live in because of our iman if we are to change our children's schools because of their iman if we are to uh, completely change the way we live our lives and the the habits that we've developed over the years to change everything for the sake of our iman that would not be too much it would be deserving actually that we sacrifice everything and that we would make dr drastic changes in our life for the sake of preserving our faith and sometimes people think and make an excuse that until i can do so i will not be able to better my situation you know some people uh, make the excuse and, and you hear some people say i want to take my kids back home to whatever country they come from from for example and they think that's the drastic step that they have to change or make in their life to preserve their iman they start to see some problems in their children and they say you know what we need to go back home in reality that's not going to fix the situation the the problems that we have in america they have reached all around the world also it's common problems to to all societies now so i don't mean make a drastic change something that's very black or white like you have to move to a muslim country or you have to either you, you have to stay here in america but i mean for example that you put your kids in a better school where you know they will they will have better friends you move to a community as opposed to being very far from a muslim community you move yourself closer to a muslim community so that your family can be involved that's the kind of uh, change that i'm i'm recommending that we make in our life uh, if it's for the sake of preserving our iman and then we should never use excuses just like the muslims who were stuck in mecca and they were not able to migrate they did not just say okay it's hopeless at this point so i can i can give up on practicing as a muslim no even though they were living in a very difficult place which is mecca before the conquest of mecca and they were still being tortured and persecuted they did not use that as an excuse rather they continued as muslims they continued even though the society and their families and everything was against them so likewise for us even if our situation is not the best and we are not able to change that situation we cannot make an excuse we can't just say i live in america oh i live in this city it's 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 a bad society there's nothing i can do we should never say there's nothing i can do rather there is a lot of things we can do in the privacy of our own home and in our own worship and in our own family to increase our iman and also to preserve our iman first of all i will um draw a little bit of a scary situation or a scary picture of the reality that we live in nowadays we live in a society which is not a muslim society and as muslims we we have things working against us not just as muslims actually but all religious people all religious people are becoming a minority and atheism is increasing and especially for our youth the influences that they see on movies and tv and even video games and when they go to school and what they read online and when you go to university and you take your philosophy class or whatever different kinds of classes and religion is uh, ridiculed every religion not just islam but there is a special attention to islam to make it seem that it's very backwards to make it seem that it's not something which is up to date that it's not something which is fitting for the world that we live in nowadays and unfortunately the the part of that scary picture is that people are leaving islam it's not just something 
that uh, we used to say many people used to say many years ago that you know when somebody becomes Muslim they never leave Islam but that's not the case that's not true and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the Quran he, 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 he talks about people who uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that people will leave Islam this is a test of course alhamdulillah the majority of people the vast majority of people who have strong iman in their heart they would never leave it and that's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and like um, in the in the conversation between Abu Sufyan and Hiraqal the leader of the Romans uh, he, he, he said do their numbers increase or decrease the number of Muslims so he said they're only increasing and then uh, uh, he said does any one of them leave it does any one of them leave that religion after they join it he said no they they, they stay as as muslims and he and and hiraqal he said وَكَذَلِكَ الْإِيمَانِ حِينَ تُخَالِطُ بَشَاشَةُ الْقُلُوبِ أو, uh, حين تخالط بشاشة القلوب. so he said that's the iman once it mixes with the heart that it, it becomes very strong so of course alhamdulillah that's the majority of cases that we don't see somebody with strong iman will leave islam but how many people have that strong iman? How many of our youth are just fed on movies and TV and video games and that's their diet? That's what they've grown up upon. They haven't grown up upon uh, the Quran and the Sunnah and the stories of the Sahaba and the stories of the prophets. That's not what they know. That's not their education. Rather, it's just going to school, having non-Muslim friends and then the media that they consume. So it is a very scary situation but that scary situation wakes us up and makes us realize the the challenge that we face it makes us realize what we have to do to face that challenge oftentimes in life we don't make a big diff, uh, uh, change until we realize that the situation has become very dangerous we 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 stay in what's called our comfort zone we don't like to make changes so once we realize that the situation is very dangerous, that our Iman is at risk, and our children's Iman is at risk, if we don't do anything in this society, then we would realize that we need to make the proper steps and take the proper precautions to preserve and make our Iman uh, our priority. How can we do this? There's a number of steps, and inshallah, um, I'll just give a few points on how we can preserve our Iman. Number one, understanding what Iman is. What does it mean when we say our faith as Muslims? It means our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is more to it than that. A lot of Muslims might think it's only our belief in Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu is the messenger of Allah. But that's not sufficient. We might have a Muslim who does not do anything, but they believe in their heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one but they, they would leave off all the other obligations in Islam so the scholars they said that Iman is not only just knowing but it's also believing strongly strong tasdiq in the heart and it's also our actions that we do al-amal which is the actions with our limbs such as prayer and the action of our heart which is uh, uh, to, to, to fear Allah to love Allah to uh, have trust in Allah, tawakkul. All of these are actions, but they're actions hidden in the uh, uh, heart. And also the statement that we say, that we say la ilaha illallah, and the statements from our tongue, this is part of, part of our iman also. So iman is a comprehensive uh, 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 belief. It's not merely just knowing that Allah exists or that Allah is one, but it's also following that tasdiq and that uh, ma'rifah, that knowledge with action action of the heart action of the limbs and also speaking it with our tongue and this iman will increase and decrease and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuna zadathum imana that when our signs are recited to them it increases their iman so our, our iman our faith will increase with good deeds and our faith will decrease with bad deeds so uh, people people often praise a person by saying 
you know, he doesn't do this. He doesn't pray. He doesn't uh, do this. He doesn't do that from Islam. But he has strong iman. And if they, if they knew the reality of iman, they would not praise a person like that to say that he doesn't pray, but he has strong iman. Uh, or he, you know, he has a good, good heart. Iman, the heart is the, the faith that we have. And if a person is not doing these good deeds, that means there's a big problem with their iman. That means there's a, uh, something lacking strongly. And likewise, our iman will go down when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's the first uh, correlation or how can we protect our iman? It's to understand what it means and then to know how to increase our iman and decrease our iman. We increase it by doing good and we decrease our iman. We make our iman go down and, 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 and lower by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we have that knowledge, we have to protect it. We cannot throw ourselves into a situation where we, where we put our iman at risk. And the way to put iman at risk, to, to put our, our faith at risk, is to involve ourselves in shubuhat, meaning doubts. Doubts which are thrown at Islam. Doubts which are thrown about the existence of Allah or about the Quran or about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who should deal with these doubts? Who should deal with these kind of things that are said about Islam? Somebody makes a YouTube video attacking Islam and somebody writes an article attacking uh, um, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who should deal with that? It should be the scholars. Those who have the knowledge and the ability to refute that information. So they're only, the scholars are only listening to these shubuhat for the sake of refuting them. Unfortunately, you see some teenagers uh, and others that they, they're just interested and they see a video on YouTube that says a catchy title uh, about our religion as Muslims, so they click on it. And then it causes them a great harm because they heard a lot of shubuhat, a lot of doubts, and they don't have the proper knowledge to be able to fight against it. So that's one thing, is to protect our hearts from these shubuhat. We are not qualified to have all of these doubts thrown, thrown against us, and we don't have the proper knowledge. If you have the knowledge, that's another story. But otherwise, stay away from it, because you want to protect your heart. Just like you would not put something, uh, uh, you would not leave your children outside in the street at night. Why? Because our children are very precious to us. We would not leave a beloved uh, pet, for example, and there is an animal that might attack it. So we would not leave something precious to us just outside and we don't really care about it. So likewise, we shouldn't throw our hearts, in, which are the, they, they contain our iman. We should not throw it and make it uh, susceptible to any doubt that is thrown at the religion of Islam. How can we deal with then with questions people have about Islam? Well, it's fine to ask questions, but ask questions to qualified people. Ask questions to Sheikh Ramadan. Ask questions to the Imam of your masjid. Ask questions to uh, the Imam in your community. Or you find somebody knowledgeable and you can, ask, you can call them and ask them. But don't just ask anyone. But yes, you can ask questions about Islam. That's not haram. That's not prohibited. Uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhi al Oh Allah, show me how you heal the, uh, or how you bring the dead to life. Why? Because he wanted to increase in iman. So likewise, if our children say, why does Islam say this? Why does the Quran say that? We should answer those questions to the best of our ability. And if we can't answer them, say, you know what? I'm going to try to get you the answer. I'm going to try to ask somebody knowledgeable so that I, I can get you the answer. So asking for a hikmah, asking for a wisdom, asking to increase your iman as Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam did, all of these things are permissible. Uh, but the problem is just merely throwing ourselves into shubuhat or doubts that can be uh, very problematic for our iman. Find out, relating to this issue, find out what kind of websites our children are going to. Don't just let them go to any website. Uh, and, and I know that's, you know, this is a very um, difficult thing to say when everybody, everybody has their phones in their pockets and they have their laptops and you can't watch them all the time, but at least to get an idea. 
you can at least have some knowledge. You can't be completely ignorant of what kind of websites your children are going on. Um, what kind of friends do they keep? Who are they uh, uh, spending the most time with? These kind of things we can know and find out. And we can understand that a lot of these websites might be causing great shubuhat. Maybe their friends are very uh, um, uh, problematic friends, even if they appear as Muslim, but they are not behaving as Muslims should. So these kind of shubuhat, we want to protect ourselves from them. Uh, before moving on to the next point, relating to the issue of shubuhat, the issue of doubts, uh, there's something very important to be said, which is there's a connection between shubuhat and shahawat. Shubuhat are doubts, and shahawat are uh, uh, desires. These desires, at first, they might seem completely unrelated. So say, for example, a young youth, uh, a young boy, he wants, to, he wants to have a girlfriend, and everybody else is doing it, and he wants to be like his friends. And of course, you know, just naturally, as young people, we ha they have these desires, and that's something just, it, it's, it's the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. So he's curious, and he wants to find out, and he wants to be like everybody else, and it's normal in this society. So that's a shahwa, that's a desire. He wants to do something, he desires to do something. How does that tie in with shubuhat? Well, if his, if his parents keep telling him it's haram and he knows that his religion even says that this is haram and it's really, he doesn't understand the wisdom behind it and he just wants to be like everybody else. At that point, that desire can turn into a uh, shubha, which is, you know what? What if I just leave all this together? What if, I, what if I just ignore what the religion says completely? And then, he, if a person leaves Islam completely, or just ignores it completely, then they, they, they might say, I don't feel any guilt anymore. You know, you, 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 I, I, I sometimes uh, have seen and heard and read the stories of people who leave Islam. And they say something which might be a troubling for a lot of Muslims. They say, I felt free. A lot of them will say, I felt free. I felt like I didn't have any rules or uh, um, uh, anything holding me back anymore. I felt I don't have to, have be, to be guilty anymore for the sins I was doing. And you know what? That's actually true. They do feel like that, but only because they fooled themselves. They fooled themselves into thinking that because I ignore all of the rules that I know, that at that point, I don't have to feel guilty anymore. And that's the whole point I was making is that's how a, sh a shubha becomes, or a shahwa becomes a shubha. That a person wants to follow their desire so much that it might cause them to reject that part of Islam completely or reject Islam completely. وَالْعِيَادُ billah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, increase our iman and keep us firm upon it. Another way to protect our Iman is to always ask Allah to protect it. To always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our Iman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, and he is who he is. He's the messenger of Allah. He used to make dua to Allah. Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, the one who turns the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. And uh, from, the, from the swear or the qasam that he used to make was, I wa muqallib al qulub or la wa muqallib al qulub that yes by allah the one who turns the hearts or no by allah the one who turns the hearts uh, uh, ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam prophet ibrahim he he would say as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran wa junubni wa baniya an na'bud al asnam protect me and my children my offspring from ever worshiping idols uh, tawaffani musliman prophet yusuf alayhi salatu was salam so protecting, asking Allah to protect your Iman. It's a very, like I said, a scary situation we live in nowadays. So we cannot just take for granted the fact that we are Muslims or the fact that our children are Muslims. Rather, we have to make dua every day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects our Iman. And we have to ask Allah very strongly to protect us until the day that we die. We are not safe until the day that we enter Jannah. We are not safe in this world that billah, some of us might, may, may become misguided. That's not something we should ever feel safe from. So we always make dua to Allah to protect our Iman 
and from the best du'as, like I said, the, the one the Prophet ﷺ would make, Ya Muqallib al qulub oh, the one who turns the hearts, Thabbit Qalbi ala deenik. Keep my heart firm on your faith. Uh, remembering Allah, remembering Allah is something that will preserve our iman greatly. To mention Allah a lot, because the Prophet ﷺ says, Mathalu alladhi yathkuru rabbah, wallathi la yathkuru rabbah, mathalu alhayyi wal mayyit. The method, the method, the example of the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not remember Allah is like the example of a living and a dead person. What do you think is the example of a person who is dead? It's that their iman is completely gone. Their faith is gone. So the remembrance of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the things that we can preserve our iman with is to... Uh, uh, make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu more important and ahead of everything else in this life. Because the Prophet sallallahu says in the famous hadith, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا That three things, a person who does them, they will find the sweetness of faith. The first one, that whoever Allah and the Messenger is more beloved to him than anything else. How can, we, how can we make that claim about our heart that Allah and his Messenger is more beloved to us? That's something secret in our heart. So how could we tell if Allah is more beloved to us than anything else? The way to tell is that if we put Allah and his Messenger ahead of everything, meaning that we put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger ahead of our desires. Whenever we want to do something haram, we put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, uh, will first or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order first and we do not disobey Allah. That's the part of the way that showing that Allah and his messenger is more beloved to us than anything else. Uh, and then the hadith goes on. Uh, to love somebody and love them only for the sake of Allah and to hate to be going back to kufr just like we would hate to be thrown into the hellfire. That a person would, it would, they would despise that they would ever go to kufr and to leave Islam more than a person would hate to be thrown into a fire. Another way to preserve our iman is to always um, test ourselves. I don't mean test yourself, like put yourself in a bad situation. What I mean is to test yourself by asking, how do we act when we are only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when people are not around? How do I act when I'm alone in my room with the door locked and nobody knows? How do I act when I'm on my computer and nobody sees what I'm watching? How do I act when I'm alone? How do I act when I'm traveling and I'm away from my family and my community? How do I act when nobody can see me except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because if we act in a way that's pleasing to Allah, even in secret, then inshallah, that's a very good sign. And if we disobey Allah, whenever we are hidden in secret, then that's a very bad sign. That we are uh, not worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking at us. We are not concerned about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. And that ties in, and I'm going to end inshallah in just a moment, that ties in with another way to test our iman or to preserve our iman, which is to do good deeds in private. And the scholars mentioned that the person who does good deeds in private, that's a way for Allah to preserve his iman. And the one who does evil deeds in private, that's a way that a person may, well, uh, uh, have iman taken away from them. And some of them, they had a beautiful statement saying, Dhunubul khalawat. Uh, that the sins performed in private are one of the main reasons that people flip, that they go back after being a strong Muslim, they become, uh, they go back on their heels and they start not practicing at all. And they were such a good Muslim before. So, so they said the opposite, that the, the worship that we do in private is from the greatest reasons for a person to have thabat.
for a, birth, a person's iman to be strong until the day that they die. So the way that we act in private when only Allah sees us, that's one of the greatest tests of our iman. Uh, and uh, there's some more points, but inshallah, I'll, I'll end here. I don't want to go on too long. Uh, so we just um, want to, to finish with the reminder that, you know, our iman is the most important and precious and priceless thing that we have. So we should spend everything and make every effort to preserve our iman. And if there's any questions also in that regard, um, I would be happy to try to answer or... Uh, of course, Sheikh Ramadan is more deserving than me. No, no, Jazakallah khairan. <laughs> Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Yusuf. So, inshallah, we have our uh, brothers and sisters here. If anyone has a question, uh, so please go ahead, inshallah. You can just uh, unmute yourself and, and ask the question, inshallah, if you want. If you have any question. Sheikh Nafid, Hayakallah, Assalamu Alaikum. This is a. Allah Hayika Sheikh, Allah Hayika Hajj, Kaif Al Hal. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I'm not sure if I'm in the middle of the day. I'm not sure if I'm in the middle of the day. I think I have a question in the chat. Can we. Uh, can we get uh, that? We can, we, yeah, well, I have the recording, inshallah. I have it, inshallah. I'm going to send it, inshallah, by email. And uh, the WhatsApp, and also we put it on our YouTube channel, inshallah. So we'll put it, inshallah. So, any other question? Do we have any other question? Seems not. It's also live on the Facebook if anyone has a question. I'm also checking the Facebook. We don't have any questions on the Facebook, inshallah. So, inshallah, if that is, inshallah, yani if no one has a question, so inshallah, we will. Uh, We'll stop here, inshallah, and um, get ready for Salat al Isha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you with the best for joining us uh, tonight. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our uh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Yusuf uh, Hussain. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it happy with good deeds, inshallah, and uh, inshallah, I will leave it for him, inshallah, to conclude with the, uh, with the dua, with the supplication, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. I see one question in the chat now. Uh, oh, there's a question? Yeah, so I'll just take it real quickly. I know uh, we, we oh, yeah. created that. He said, how can we create the environment at home? Yes. Uh, but we kind of created the environment that we were just leaving the, <laughs> the lecture. So I'll answer shortly, inshallah. Um, how can we create the environment at home? Uh, many, many, many ways. Uh, by by uh, being a good example. Um, so if we want our children to follow us, we have to be the example. We cannot be... Uh, the ones to always miss um, Salat al-Fajr and we pray at 8 or 9 o'clock and then we are expect our children not to follow in that example. So the, the kids, when they see their parents doing something, they will also follow that example. Uh, to make some time for Iman, to make some time for uh, reading Qur'an together as a family, to understanding the Qur'an, to read an, a hadith or two uh, at, uh, at nighttime, for example, uh, to make an environment of Iman in the home, so by doing good deeds, and also by pr pr uh, uh, protecting our home from disobedience of Allah. A lot of times we are much too lax in what's, what, what's, what's being watched on the TV at home. And uh, we, we just kind of ignore the fact that there is a lot of inappropriate things that we are seeing and we are bringing into our houses. And when we bring that into our house, not only is it disobedience of Allah, but do we think that, you know, the barakah is going to come in our homes at that point? If the barakah comes from reading the Qur'an and the angels come in the, in the house because of that, then how about all of the disobedience of Allah? That's going to decrease the barakah and the blessings that we have in our home. So, uh, like I said, there's many ways and that could be maybe its own topic of how to create a, a good environment in our home. But just the main ways that I said is being a good example ourselves to others, um, trying to do good activities with the family, uh, like understanding the Quran or reading uh, a hadith or watching a lecture and keeping sins out of our house. Do not stay silent about it. Do not allow it to happen because that will decrease the barakah in the home. Uh, and inshallah, and uh, uh, if you'd like to make a dua, Sheikh, uh, please. 
Oh, جزاك الله خير انا وانت ان شاء الله تو ميك دعاء اي اي اولسو بوستد اور ذا لينك تو اور يوتيوب شانل اون ذا تشات اف يو وود لايك تو تشيك ات فور اول ذا سبيتشز اند ذا ليكشرز اتس اول اوف ذيم ار افيلبل ان شاء الله اند ذس وان ان شاء الله از جوين تو بي اولسو افيلبل سون ان شاء الله اون ذا يوتيوب شانل سو ان شيخ يوسف ان شاء الله يو جو اهيد وذ ذا وذ ذا دعاء ان شاء الله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our iman and preserve the iman of our children and ourselves and all of the Muslim ummah. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us from uh, this sickness and from all sicknesses and give us good health and allow us to live in safety and security. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahiyat minhum wal amwat inna ka sami'un qareebun mujibu al-da'wat khul allahum ala nabiyyina muhammad وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا جزاكم الله خيرا من الله سبحانه وتعالى ادي ورد يو ذا بيست فور جوينينج اس تو نايت ان شاء الله وي ويل بي اولسو اونرد تو هاف يو ان شاء الله ان فيوتشر ايفنتس ان شاء الله عز وجل اند فيري نايس تو سي يو اجين افتر ذس لاست تايم ان ذا ان ذا حج ان شاء الله الله سبحانه وتعالى ريتيرنز ثينجز تو نورمال فيري سون ان شاء الله And we go again and again and again, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Jazakumullah khair. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you brothers and sisters who are joining us tonight. And inshallah, as I said, that it will be available uh, on the YouTube very soon, inshallah, this recording, inshallah, for the benefit of our brothers and sisters. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Yusuf. And we will see all of you, inshallah, again in another session. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.